It's difficult to say what you know drives people's passions or why we do one thing rather than another. But I know that I've always like, sort of always had an interest in medicine and in the natural world. Actually, like I love animals, I love plants. I always have, so I've gravitated towards them. And so I think probably as a child, I, my two maybe two big things that you would say are distinctive of me is that I loved nature and I just loved kind of going outside and playing with animals and seeing plants and looking at the world around me and I've loved math and math puzzles so to me the work that I'm doing you know it's happened to be and sort of it's a windy path but it's taken me to exactly where I was probably at the age six you know which is wandering around looking at the world and trying to understand it mathematically. Absolutely I mean I I think that you know Everyone has different ways that they're trying to understand the world, and a lot of people do it through religion, and I respect that tremendously. But for me, actually, I do it through the study of science and through looking, you know, at the people around me and the world around me. So there's so much, um, there's so, you know, the world is so fascinating, both culturally um, and you know, scientifically, and I've really enjoyed that. So I think that my journey, if you know, if we are all to have journeys, is is through that, you know, through understanding um, the world. And I, I think that evolution, like I said, I absolutely respect religion and people's religious beliefs, and there's a lot of beauty to it. But I think that evolution also just has a lot of beauty to it, right? Understanding how, I mean, I, I don't think that it's at all denigrating to think that we, you know, are related to the other animals on Earth. I think it's just a beautiful thing, and it's an extension. And it, it in many ways, warms my heart to see the connectivity between all of these different organisms and how they've grown together. Yeah, um, so I mean, I've uh, I've worked with. Um, I mean, I don't I don't do clinical work right now, so that was a choice. It was you know the difficult choices we have to make in our lives is uh, that I couldn't do you know teach and do research and do medicine well, um, and I wanted to be able to do whatever I do well, and I didn't think that it would be good for my patients if I was focusing on research and teaching and also seeing them from time to time. I wanted to focus, and some people can do it well. I said I had too many interests, and so while I love medicine, I wasn't uh, going to ever be able to do clinical work. But we do work with a lot of sites in Senegal and Nigeria, um, and actually throughout Africa with a lot of different consortiums that we work with. So I've seen and worked with a lot of patients with different um, with malaria and Lassa fever. Um, but I leave it to the doctors to do the good work. It's a it's kind of a it's a wonderful thing to be in a field that you know that has such a sense of urgency that, um, you know, malaria, every day that you're not working, uh, every day that you don't have a cure, um, those are lives that could be saved. And the same with loss of fever. So you, you benefit from feeling that, you know, intensity. Um, but fundamentally, science takes time. And to do it well, like, you don't want to actually rush in so quickly that you don't, you know, malaria is actually a very difficult thing. And in, a, in some ways, we have to be very patient in the way that we try to um, interact with it. Because we, you know, we tried in the 60s and the 50s and 60s to eradicate it, and it just came right back. So in a, in a lot of ways, while we don't want to be too patient that we're not moving as quickly as we can, you want to be very thoughtful in the way that you approach it. And so I both feel the sense of urgency and the need to be very cautious and careful.